but folly praise, but fancy loves. I praise and love the child whose heart no thought, whose tongue no word, whose hand no deed defiled. I praise him most, I love him best. Oh, praise and love is his, while him I love, in him I live and cannot live amiss. Love's sweetest mark, man's highest theme, man's most desired light. To love him life, to leave him death, to live in him delight. Each to other due. First friend he was, best friend he is, all times will try him true. Though young yet wise, though small yet strong, though man yet God he is, as wise he knows, as strong. He can, as God he loves to bless. His knowledge rules, his strength defends, his love doth cherish all. His birth our joy, his life our light, his death our end of In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. By thy immaculate conception, O Mary, make my body pure and my soul holy. My mother, preserve me this night from mortal sin. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. By thy immaculate conception, O Mary, make my body pure and my soul holy. My mother, preserve me this night from mortal sin. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. By the Immaculate Conception, O Mary, make my body pure and my soul holy. My mother, preserve me this night from mortal sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
everyone, today is the 4th of March in the year of our Lord, 2021. Today is, we celebrate in the Universal Calendar, Thursday of the second week of Lent, and we also commemorate the Feast of St. Casimir, Confessor, as well as the Feast of St. Lucius, Pope and Martyr. Selection from the Martyrology for today. In Vilno, Lithuania, Blessed Casimir, Confessor, the son of King Casimir, whom Pope Leo X inscribed in the role of the saints. We'll have more on him in a few minutes. Also, at Nicomedia, in the reign of Emperor Diocletian, the martyr Saint Adrian and 23 others, who endured martyrdom by having their limbs crushed. Their remains were taken to Byzantium by the Christians and buried there with reverence and honor. Afterwards, the body of St. Adrian was transferred to Rome on the 8th of September, on which day his feast is observed. And in other places, many other holy martyrs, confessors, and virgins. And today being a Thursday, we keep today in honor of our Divine Redeemer in the Blessed Sacrament, whereas tomorrow, Friday, we hold in honor of the Passion uh, and Death of our Savior. I would like to once again welcome you to our humble little live stream mission. Joyful greetings and best holy wishes to you. May our Divine Redeemer and our Mother of Perpetual Succor bless you abundantly, and I hope that this Lent is finding you well and growing in holiness and love for them. The first notice for today is taken from the Glories of Mary by our Holy Father St. Alphonsus. The first part on the Salve Regina, Our Life, Our Sweetness. Continuing section three, Mary renders death sweet to her clients. Ecclesiasticus says that her hands are a healthful binding and that in the latter end thou shalt find rest in her. Oh, you are indeed fortunate, my brother, if at death you are bound with the sweet chains of the love of the mother of God. These chains are chains of salvation. They are chains that will ensure your eternal salvation and will make you enjoy in death that blessed peace, which will be the beginning of your eternal peace and rest. Father Benetti, in his book on the perfection of our blessed Lord, says that having attended the deathbed of a great lover of Mary, he heard him, before expiring, utter these words. O oh, my father, would that you could know the happiness that I now enjoy from having served the most holy mother of God. I cannot tell you the joy that I now experience. Father Suarez, in consequence of his devotion to Mary, which was such that he used to say that he would willingly change all his learning for the merit of a single Hail Mary, died with such peace and joy that in that moment he said, I could not have thought that death was so sweet, meaning that he could never have imagined that it was possible, if he had not then experienced it, that he could have found such sweetness in death. You, devout reader, will without doubt experience the same joy and contentment in death if you can then remember that you have loved this good mother, who cannot be otherwise than faithful to her children, who have been faithful in serving and honoring her by their visits, rosaries, and fasts, and still more by frequently thanking and praising her, and often recommending themselves to her powerful protection.
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The second notice is also is taken from the um, the Holy Eucharist by our Holy Father Saint Alphonsus. from Meditations for the Octave of Corpus Christi. Meditation 2. Jesus remains on the altar that everyone may be able to find him. Saint Teresa said that in this world it is impossible for all subjects to speak to the king. As for the poor, the most they can hope is to speak with him by means of some third person. But to speak with thee, O King of Heaven, there is no need of third persons. For everyone that wishes can find thee in the most holy sacrament, and can speak to thee at his pleasure and without restraint. For this reason, said the same saint, Jesus Christ has concealed his majesty in the sacrament under the appearance of bread, in order to give us more confidence and to take away from us all fear of approaching him. Oh, how Jesus seems continually to exclaim from the altar, Come to me, all you that labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you. Come, he says, come ye poor, come ye infirm, Come ye afflicted, come ye just, and ye sinners, and ye shall find in me a remedy for all your losses and afflictions. Such is the desire of Jesus Christ, to console everyone who has recourse to him. He remains day and night on our altars, that he may be found by all, and that he may bestow favors upon all. Hence the saints experienced in this world such pleasure in remaining in the presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, that days and nights appeared to them as moments. The Countess of Feria, having become a nun of the Order of St. Clair, was never wearied of remaining in the choir in sight of the tabernacle, being asked one day what she was doing so long before the Blessed most holy sacrament, she answered with surprise, What do I do before the blessed sacrament? What do I do? I return thanks, I love, and I pray. St. Philip Neri, being in the presence of the blessed sacrament, exclaimed, Behold my love, behold all my love. Ah, if Jesus were thus our whole love, Days and nights in his presence would appear also to us as moments. Affections and Prayers O my Jesus, from this day forward I also hope to say always to thee, when I come to visit thee on thy altars, Behold my love, behold all my love. Yes, my beloved Redeemer, I will love none other but thee, I desire that thou shouldst be the only love of my soul. I seem to die of sorrow when I think that hitherto I have loved creatures and my own pleasures more than thee, and have turned my back upon thee, the sovereign good. But thou wouldst not have me lost, and therefore hast thou borne me with so much patience. And instead of chastising me, Thou hast pierced my heart with so many darts of love that I could no longer resist thy kindness, but have given myself up to thee. I see that thou wouldst have me to be entirely thine. But since thou wouldst have it to be so, do thou make me so thyself, for it is thou who must do it. Do thou detach my heart from all earthly affections and from myself, and grant that I may seek none other but thee, that I may think of none but thee, that I may speak of none but thee, 
and that I may only desire and sigh to burn with love for thee, and live and die for thee alone. O love of my Jesus, come and occupy my whole heart, and expel from it all other love but that of God. I love thee, O Jesus, in the sacrament. I love thee, my treasure, my love, my all. O Mary, my hope, pray for me, and make me belong entirely to Jesus. So, one point I'd like to draw your attention to, here at the beginning, where St. Teresa says that she makes this comparison this between how difficult it is to get access to the ruler, the human ruler of a country, but it's so much easier to be able to make a visit to our Divine Redeemer in the Blessed Sacrament. And this may have become a bit more difficult over the last year, but if you're still able to make it to a church that it, or chapel that is open for prayer, it's good to take advantage of this opportunity to go to our Heavenly King to lay out your petitions in front of him right there, hidden in the Most Blessed Sacrament. But if you're not able to, bear in mind that he's still there. He's still there. All you, Wherever you are, you can still direct your prayers to him. So after these notices, we'll have the Holy Rosary, followed by the Breastplate Prayer of St. Patrick and the Chaplet, or the, um, excuse me, the Exorcism of St. Michael and the, and the Angels. Then we'll have some devotions following that. So, as I mentioned earlier, Today we celebrate the feast of St. Casimir, a prince and a very special patron of Poland. He was born in the year 1458 to the royal family of Poland. He was the son of King Casimir III and of Elizabeth of Austria, the daughter of the emperor, Albert II. And he was also the third child of a very large family of 13. Although several of his brothers were called to rule various countries, Bohemia, Hungary, Poland, and though he could have easily become a king himself, he was more interested in becoming a saint. So he sought to avoid kingship as much as possible. To avoid being sucked into the worldliness of a life at the court, which he could not entirely get away from, he took on himself several acts of severe penance, such as wearing a hair shirt, sleeping on the ground at night, and spending a considerable amount of time in prayer during the night. In his prayer life, he sought to develop a constant awareness of the presence of God. And this practice manifested itself through a deep reverence and high regard for the Holy Mass and for all of the ceremonies of the Church. He was deeply devoted to our Blessed Lady and to the Passion of our Divine Redeemer, which he spent a lot of time meditating on. His holiness overflowed into his personal behavior, and he was known to everyone for his uninterrupted cheerfulness towards everyone he met with. However, he was still royalty, 
And when he was fifteen, some of the nobles of Hungary came to St. Casimir's father, the king, with a request. These nobles were dissatisfied with their king, Matthias Corbin, and they wanted St. Casimir to replace him. St. Casimir was unwilling, but his father insisted that he accept this dignity. So, not willing to disobey his father on this point, he agreed. At the head of 20,000 men, he made his way towards Hungary. But before long, the news reached him that King Matthias was coming with, to meet him with an army of 16,000 men in order to, to defend his claim to the throne. Not only that, but it also turned out that King Matthias had settled his dispute with the majority of the people. And there was also a request from the Pope asking that St. Casimir turn back. So, filled with joy at this news, St. Casimir turned back. But rather than face the anger of his father for not accepting this dignity, he didn't return to court. Instead, he went into a life of retirement at the castle of Dobsky, where he continued to live his life of prayer and penance. Before long, St. Casimir learned that the attempt by the Hungarian nobles to overthrow King Matthias had actually been unjustified. So when these same nobles tried again to make him king, he firmly refused. Rather, he lived for the next 12 years, sanctifying himself in the same manner as he had done before. St. Casimir maintained perpetual chastity, and he heroically resisted the advice of his doctors to get married which they falsely imagined would be necessary for him to improve his health. Instead, he redoubled his exercises of piety. He eventually came down with tuberculosis. He, before long, he was able to foretell the day and hour of his death, and he died a holy death at Vilnius in Lithuania on the 4th of March, 1482, at the age of 23. Dom, Dom Prosper Guranger gives a beautiful commentary on this feast of St. Casimir. He says, It is from a court that we are to be taught today the most heroic virtues. Casimir is a prince. He is surrounded by all the allurements of youth and luxury, and yet he passes through the snares of the world with as much safety and prudence as though he were an angel in human form. His example shows us what we, what we may do. The world has not smiled on us as it, had, as it did on Casimir but how much we have loved it. If we have gone so far as to make it our idol, we must now break what we have adored and give our service to this sovereign Lord who alone has a right to it. Let's pause there for a moment and consider this. Dom Guiranje says, the world has not smiled on us as it did on St. Casimir. For many of you, the world has a lot less to offer now than it did just a year ago. In fact, in some respects, it may have less to offer you than it did to St. Casimir, who was a young man, rich, and had his whole life ahead of him. All he had to do was say yes 
and he could have been a king. He could have easily found someone to marry. For many of you, you may not have all of this, but still, it is so easy for us to be attached to the little that we have. So let us now take advantage of the fact that the world is falling apart around us to turn to God and to seek our pleasure in doing his will. Back to Dom Guéranger. He says, when we read the lives of the saints and find that persons who were in the ordinary walks of life practiced extraordinary virtues, we are inclined to think that they were not exposed to great temptations or that the misfortunes they met with in the world made them give themselves up unreservedly to God's service. Such interpretations of the actions of the saints are shallow and false, for they ignore this great fact, that there is no condition or state, however humble, in which man has not to combat the evil inclinations of his heart. And that corrupt nature alone is strong enough to lead him to sin. So let's pause there again. That is another important point, and it is a very easy one to forget. The saints were ordinary human beings like us. They experienced the same trials, the same temptations, and the same concupiscence that we experience. The same sufferings, the same opposition by worldly people, family, friends, you name it. And we must keep this in mind when we read the lives of the saints, because much of these struggles that they went through are interior, which means that the author of the life can't, may not necessarily know about it to be able to write it down. Back to Don Guerranger again. He says again, but in such a saint as Casimir, we have no difficulty in recognizing that all his Christian energy was from God and not from any natural source. And we rightly conclude that we, who have the same good God, may well hope that this season of spiritual regeneration will change and better us. Casimir preferred death to sin. But is not every Christian bound to be thus minded every hour of the day? And yet such is the infatuation produced by the pleasures or advantages of this present life, that we every day see men plunging themselves into sin, which is the death of the soul. And this not for the sake of saving the life of the body, but for a vile and transient gratification, which is oftentimes contrary to their temporal interests. What stronger proof could there be than this of the sad effects produced in us by original sin? The examples of the saints are given as a light to lead us in the right path. Let us follow it, and we shall be saved. Besides, we have powerful aid in their merits and intercession. Let us take courage at the thought that these friends of God have a most affectionate compassion for us, their brethren, who are surrounded by so many and so great dangers. Thus far, the commentary of Dom Prosper Garange. May our divine Redeemer and our Mother Perpetual Sucker bless you abundantly. The Holy Rosary will follow in a few minutes.
Let folly praise, but fancy loves. I praise and love the child whose heart no thought, whose tongue no word, whose hand no deed defiled. I praise him most, I love him best. Oh, praise and love is his, while him I love, in him I live, and cannot live amiss. Love's sweetest wisest theme, man's most desired light, to love him life, to leave him Each to other due. First friend he was, best friend he is, all times will try him true. Though young yet wise, though small yet strong, though man yet God he is, as wise he knows, as strong. He can, as God he loves to bless. His knowledge rules, his strength defends. His love doth cherish all. His birth our joy, his life our light, his death our end of thrall. A joyful spring. Oh, bonny prince, whose tender arms can force all foes to fly. Correct my faults, protect my life, direct me when I die. Correct my faults, protect my life, direct me when